It turns out I'm really bad at flying quadcopters, so let's try to make this thing a little bit less broken, a little bit smaller, and a little bit stronger. Well, there's a whole entire quadcopter disassembled. Didn't take that long, maybe like five minutes, because it's almost entirely held together by zip ties and a few screws, so it's pretty simple. But now it's time to start designing a new one. Check it out! Here's the newest quadcopter design. I'm using almost entirely nylon and a little bit of P uh, PUTG for the whole entire build. The nylon is going to be a lot more durable than the ABS was in my last quadcopter design, so hopefully when I crash it, the pieces will absorb the impact instead of just snapping. I'm using a PETG for all these big housing pieces because the nylon and the ABS is really hard to try printing very thin and very large like this. So hopefully the PETG is going to be a little bit brittle, but I think it'll be strong enough to hold up for most impacts. I also have two nylon, or sorry, two carbon fiber spars going down the whole center of the thing. Now the cool thing about this quadcopter is I made it foldable. So basically you pull out all these pins, and it allows the quadcopter to get significantly smaller because these things are huge and it's really hard to carry this thing around with you if you want to go out like backpacking and taking it with you or skiing or something so all the arms fold in like this it's nice and small and then you can use the pins put them back in a different hole now and then that locks the entire thing into place so it doesn't open up on you and then the camera also folds down just like that so now it's a much smaller size, and I think that's much easier to carry around with you. I'm not sure what to do with the antenna, I can't unscrew it, it does kind of protrude quite a bit, but it is a bendy antenna so it will take some impact. But that's pretty cool, so I think that's just about as small as I can make it with an 8 inch prop without having a holding prop. This is pretty much as small as you can get, so I'm pretty proud of that. So now let's take a peek inside. So I am using tape to hold the covers down right now because eventually I'm going to use magnets, but I don't have magnets with me right now. And like usual, I also designed this entire thing in SolidWorks first to make it much easier to assemble it in 3D print. So I'll probably show a little rendering right now as I'm talking. So as we open it up, both of these two flaps are on hinges, which is kind of nice. So they both open and close like that. And then, oh, I forgot to put my battery. So basically the battery the battery slides right in there. And these straps can be used to hold it closed. And here we got the KK2 Mini for my flight controller. And then underneath there we have a little, uh, uh, what's it called, a power. OSD 2.0, I think it's called. And then underneath that, even is the ESC. So it's just a little itsy bitsy power block all built up that's really compact. And it works really, really well for storing everything in really small space and all the wires gonna hang out. I also got my Fat Shark 250 milliwatt trans, uh, transmitter for the video. And that's about, and also my uh, little Free Sky uh, 4 channel transmitter or receiver right there. And then for cameras, I have a little. Itsy bitsy FPV camera to get the really fast and uh, low latency video feed to my goggles. And I also have a GoPro knockoff or SJ cam for capturing better video afterwards. But that's pretty much it for the inside. Now I think it's time to go try this thing outside. Hopefully it doesn't crash in the first 10 seconds like last time. <laughs> so wish me luck. Sadly, the quadcopter did not work. I tried it outside, and right when the motor started spinning up to speed, they'd stop and kind of seize up instantly. And I think that's because the arms are a little bit too flexible. As you can see here, I can bend them quite a bit, which is awesome for durability. But in terms of keeping the motors stationary and exactly in place, it was not working very well. So I'm going to try printing all the arms out of PETG, which is a lot less flexible and a little less durable too, which might not be good. But hopefully that'll stop the instant seize up problem on the motors. So out of the new PETG arm right here, I took the repeller blades off the other ones because I think them messing up messed up this one also. And if you can see when I turn them on, it does still wobble, but not as much. This is still the same infill as these guys are, so I'm going to try printing this guy with more infill to see if it's a little bit stronger, a little more uh, rigid. But, let's see. Arm it, and then... 
See down right there, those are the vibrations. Well, and I... It's definitely better than before, so I think that's good. So I'm going to try more info, maybe that'll look a little bit better. And here's what the other one looks like, just for uh, comparison. And I, I think that's much worse, so I think this definitely is better. So I'm going to put some more of those with some thicker info. It actually works. Oh my god. actually worked! I can't believe it! So last night I was floating around in the quad outside my building and in one of the fields that the school has and it worked pretty well. I was flying an acrobat which I haven't really done before so it's kind of scary doing that but I got the hang of it pretty quick. Can't do any flips yet though. Uh, so the problem I think was that my uh, last props weren't very balanced and all that imbalance created a lot of vibrations in it. So I added these new carbon fiber ones which are a lot better balanced and it's not really affecting it as much. It's still it does bind up every once in a while for a second, but I was actually able to fly it last time, which I was impressed with. Also, I am still trying to straighten up the the uh, arms on the whole entire quadcopter, which I think will help even more. So I'm going to go try it outside again and see if it works any better in the daytime. Let's see how it goes. So it's a bit windy today, so I'm not sure how long this is going to last. I might crash into a tree. There's plenty of obstacles around here, so this might be the last day for the quadcopter today. But we'll see how it goes. There's Nico, my friend. <laughs> uh -oh. Hi guys, it's been a few weeks after the quadcopter crash in our last video and I don't think I'm going to continue with this one. It's just too flimsy and having really bad vibration problems. So I'm going to build a whole new one and almost entirely out of carbon fiber and some nylon parts. Not for structural, or not for like arms made out of nylon, but just joints that need to be kind of flexible. So I'm almost done building that one in SolidWorks right now. I just need to uh, put it in all the parts and cut out the carbon fiber and then that's going to be a... Uh, Hopefully a much better quadcopter that's also affordable, but foldable in a different way. So keep an eye out for that, and uh, sorry this one didn't work as well as I thought it was going to, but I'm sure the next one will work a little bit better. So, I'll see you then.